So we're on to our next speaker, who, who is going to be talking about the introduction to GLTN and also Kadastar. Well, for Global Land Network, our speaker is going to be Paul Katango from GLTN, that's Global Land Network, and Justus Wambai from Kadastar. They will be introducing to us STDM and Kadastar tools. And also, just a quick reminder, kindly look at the participant handbook that was sent by email to take a look at the bios for our facilitators. Over to you, Paul. Uh, thank you. Thank you again, Angela. Uh, let me take a minute to share my screen. All right, uh, thank you everyone. And uh, uh, thank you for the organizers uh, for allowing me to share my experience in uh, STDM uh, as a tool for data management. Uh, as mentioned earlier, my name is Paul Gadogo. I work with uh, GLTN and I'm one of the core developers for STDM. Uh, background in computer science. Uh, duty is mainly focused on tool customization for implementation context and tool deployment. I also do a lot of user training. Uh, my passion is mainly on programming languages, software design and uh, development and uh, training and um, inclined towards open source technologies uh, because I believe that they do save on costs and uh, what you call total cost of ownership. So again, I welcome you for, to my presentation. So I'm going to talk about STDM as my colleague Alia talked uh, about the general concept of STDM. I will not dwell a lot on that. However, I will go through some of these topics. Uh, STDM overview, the features, uh, the components, the modules, and of course, talk about uh, the profiles, what are data profiles and how to manage data on STDM, uh, both textual and spatial data. I will also talk about data exchange. How do you exchange data? I know someone had asked a question about integration with other products. And, and then we do have, uh, uh, I'll also share a little bit about uh, uh, the mobile integration module within STDM and also talk about the document design and uh, document generation. Um, so uh, social channel domain model, uh, as my colleague mentioned earlier, is a concept of bridging the gap to represent people to learn relationships independent of the level of formality, legality, and technicality, that one has been addressed. Uh, and my colleague is an expert in that area. And he has also explained what SDM as a model, how it fits into the ISO and the LADM uh, standards. However, for me, I will stick to STDM as an information tool uh, where we bring together all the conceptual model, uh, the concept and the model, and we build our software. Uh, we build the software around that. Um, so what is social tenor domain model? Um, mainly this is the key uh, this is the key diagram that you need to remember every time you're working with STDM either as a concept or as an information tool. Uh, it has uh, four components but mainly three are the key ones which is the party the spatial unit and the relationship in between them, which is what we call the social tenor relationship or the STR. Then to support that relationship, we do have the supporting documents. These can be videos, audio, or photos. So a party can be a person in the group, and uh, of course the spatial unit can be one of these uh, components. And of course, in between their rights of uh, either occupancy, ownership, customary, uh, tenor or tenancy or even hunting or 
even uh, what we call uh, religion rights within a particular area. So this is the key diagram. Every time you work with STDM, once you understand this diagram, then you're good to go. So these are the participatory enumeration process where we engage the local communities during the data collection. Uh, this is very key because we don't rely a lot on the uh, on uh, on uh, formal uh, data collection from the government. Um, so we most of our exercises we we, we deal with the communities, and uh, this is where the participatory enumeration comes into play. So the how this one works is we do have a planning. Uh, there's a planning process. There's a planning process where we do the planning and the consultations before we start uh, to collect the data. Then we do have, uh, once we've planned, we are good to go. We do the mapping and structure numbering. That is, on the, we agree on which numbers we need to, mainly especially for parcels or property, we might just give temporary numbers or any other uh, identifiers that we need to have before we get to do the enumerations. Then we do go to the field and do the interviews and data collection. And then we do the data validation, we capture the data and do the validation and analysis. And if everything is fine, you're good, but if it's not, then you repeat the cycle until you are happy. So most of the time you'll find there's a back and forth. Sometimes the data you collected is not accurate. You might decide to go back and collect because some of the documents that you might generate at the end of this exercise might require that the data is accurate. More so if you're dealing with boundaries of parcels or pieces of land or property, it might require that you have the correct uh, data. So the mapping process, sometimes we, we use um, uh, aerial maps, especially for areas that we cannot access um, uh, due to either they're not accessible, they're remote and they're not accessible, or they are conflict, uh, they're prone to conflict and you might want to engage into that area. Chances are we might use the aerial photos, uh, aerial maps to do the the mapping and here again we engage the communities to identify their properties during the uh, data mapping and of course sometimes we do get to the field and actually do the actual mapping so stdm as an information tool this is the core of my uh, uh, my presentation so what are the key features of the software because it is a software uh, and uh, basically STDM is based on free and open source technologies. Uh, there's no cost. Uh, uh, the only cost that is there, maybe it's the time, but most of the time is uh, uh, the product is free. Uh, you can download it and uh, you start using it. Um, and for that reason, it becomes very affordable in many of the projects especially projects that are not well, uh, they don't have a good uh, uh, back, backing up, you know, finance backing up. So free open source would work very well. And uh, of course it provides the CoreJS functionality. Uh, STDM runs as a plugin inside the QGIS application. So most of the, uh, most of the GIS functionality we rely on the on the QGIS. We borrow that from the QGIS and we are able to, to make use of the of the facilities of the QGIS. And of course the framework is well customizable. You realize as you're going to see in coming slides that every time you use the product, you really don't have to rewrite the code. You don't need to rewrite the software to meet this particular context. Most of the time we do what we call customization of the survey tool, like the questionnaire and you fit it into the, into, into the software. That way you're able to meet a different context without really changing the actual application itself. However, however, if need be, and we've experienced this in different implementations, you might be forced to actually change the, the application itself. Again, it's an open source 
it's quickly adaptable so we can adopt to different uh, uh, customizations. It is a multi-user, it has multi-user capabilities and uh, uh, that means if I put it on a, uh, if I, I install it on a, on a bridge and a medium size uh, office where they need to share data, then a couple. Sorry to cut you short. Can you please increase the volume, please? Other participants are having issues hearing. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, please, Angela, in case of anything, please cut me short and let me let me know. Sorry. Uh, All right, then no problem. All right. I hope now I'm audible enough. Thank you. So, um, uh, the system itself also can integrate with other applications within an organization. So if you have other applications that are running, especially you have other, uh, what you call uh, your other financial applications or business applications, you can hook it up. You can hook it up to that, um, uh, to that application or integrate it with that application and be able to read the data. For example, if you're producing uh, occupancy licenses for a particular area, maybe it's a local county, then you might want to say that the license can only be produced if that person has already paid their land rates or something like that. So you would want to integrate the two. So what happens is that we are able to come in and say, okay, this is your application for billing. Then you can hook up, you can hook, we can hook it up there. And every time you want to generate a occupancy license from STDA, then it checks to see if that person has paid their their, their fees. So uh, yeah, it can integrate with other applications. So what are the components that make STDM? And I hope I'm audible enough because uh, I can see my mic doesn't look like it is blasting enough. So um, uh, Angela, am I uh, audible enough? Yes, yes, you are. Yeah, I can hear okay. you properly. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, so what are the key components that make STDM? One is where the data is stored. Where is this, this is stored in, uh, in what you call the database server. Uh, most of you must have played or must have come, close, must have worked closely with some of the database servers. There are many of them, uh, but most of the high-end database servers uh, are very costly. For example, we do have one that is called Oracle. We do have others called uh, uh, Informix. We do have we do have Microsoft products, uh, Microsoft SQL server, but you have to pay for licenses. However, we do have one called Postgres, which actually plays in the same league with these big uh, uh, database servers. And it's free uh, and open source. That means you can actually uh, have it and uh, for free. And that's what we use. So it can cater for small uh, entities and at the same time, the big entities. Uh, big companies use it uh, and uh, it is very versatile and it, is, it actually works very well. That's what we use for storing our data. Then uh, we make use of the Postis uh, extension. For many of you who have worked with uh, uh, some of the GIS applications, you'll find, you'll notice that uh, Postgres itself doesn't have the the GS functionality. You have to plug in the GS functionality into the database itself. That extension that you plug into Postgres is what we call the Postis. And it's an amazing. It gives you all this functionality to do spatial analysis. And uh, the, the functions are they, they, they are in there uh, for free. So that's what we use to do our, our GIS and to handle our GIS data inside Postgres. Then we do have uh, the QGIS application itself. This is the core application to do the GIS. Again, all of you, by now you know that GIS, uh, QGIS is an open and free uh, application. It is the best uh, uh, open source um, GIS application. Uh, and that's what we, we use. Um, it has features. Uh, uh, similar to uh, to ARC, uh, it's a debate that I know I wouldn't want to start right now, but it works perfectly well, and uh, 
it supports a lot of plugins. So if you don't find that functionality that you've been hoping to find, that you saw it in other application, you can actually build a plugin and stick it into QGIS and you're good to go. So this is what Sorry. it means, of course. Paul, I'm so sorry to interrupt you. We just wanted to give you a reminder about the time. Thank you. All right. How many how many minutes left on me? Um, if you could maybe wrap up in the next couple of minutes and then we'll pass over to Justice. All right. So let me just uh, quickly uh, do one more slide and then I will, uh, I will wrap up. So uh deploying an installation and I've, i think i'll just finish on this particular section and uh, what does it mean how do we deploy and install stdn it comes in two installations we have a standalone application we install on your desktop and that means everything the desk the database the QGIS runs on your app on your desk on your desktop or your laptop that's what we call the standalone a strategy uh, then we have the second strategy, which is a network. That means if you have an organization that trans, uh, it's a big medium organization, like, an, like a, a local government or any other big office, then you can install it on a network and you'll be able to share the data. And uh, I think I'll stop there uh, because uh, uh, the others will pick up uh, in my next session. Thank you very much. Back to you, Angela. Thank you very much, Paul. That was highly, highly, highly appreciated. We'd have loved to know more, but because of the time, we have to be as fast as possible. And I'm also really excited, you know, to get started on using STDM. So passing over to Justus, who will be taking on on Cadastra. Over to you, Justus. Hello, Justus. Sorry, we're having to stop. for that. Um, uh, let me, uh, uh, can, you all, um, can anyone confirm that they are viewing my presentation? Yes. Would you mind please going into presenter mode? Yeah, yeah, um, right away. Fantastic, thank you. Hi, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Um, um, it's my joy to join you today for this session. Um, and in this presentation, I'm going to take you through um, the Cadastra Foundation, uh, who we are, what we do, and where we are based. Um, um, my name is Justus Wambai. I'm a landed instruction specialist um, by profession. Um, and currently, uh, I lead a uh, cadaster effort uh, to support communities in documentation in the larger East African and part of South Africa. Um, the reason why we are here today is one, uh, we are surveyors. Um, uh, and that means that we understand the challenges that um, we have in the sector. And two, we have the te technical expertise um, to collect what we call proprietary data or to support engineering, um, survey engineering activities. Um, and we can all attest to that despite the advancement in technology and growth of the surveying sector, um, research is showing that uh, more than a billion people are still undocumented and at risk of losing their land. And um, in, in, in the continents, especially in the global south, where the majority of the poor people uh, uh, live um, in urban areas or are in de dependent on agriculture uh, as a source of livelihood. If you have uh, 1 billion people uh, whose tenure is not secure, it means that we are locking a very, very integral part um, of our population. And why is it so? Um, in this picture, I'm sure most of us can relate with this. Um, you, you can see uh, total station, uh, reflector, and um, uh, static GPS, damn them. Um, the, the innovation in technology also comes at a cost. It's very expensive to have this 
kind of equipment. And you can see from this, um, this activity, this activity is not uh, participatory. And when we go to tenure, um, especially land rights, um, when we go down to the communities to start mapping, there is always a conflict between the statutory and the, the customary laws. Um, the communities feel that they're not participating in this. Um, the communities feel that this this process is very expensive, even for the government. Um, for instance, um, I'm, a uh, I'm, I'm a citizen of Kenya. We haven't yet been able to do a complete uh, adjudication of our country. In the sector, we have re we are rethinking the traditional approaches in in in, in surveying. Um, um, with uh, coming um, about with the satellite, the smartphones, the external GPS, computers, drone, um, we are starting to see how we can be able to incorporate these into the surveying sector. And this is um, um, maybe just to highlight: this is the kind of um, problems we are solving at Cadastra through rethinking the traditional approaches. Um, we are trying to solve the failed top-down land administration system. Um, we are trying to bring more, in, uh, bring in more data and putting it in one repository where all can access in order to fill the land uh, data cap. We are trying to um, supporting communities by providing them with technology so that they can be able to go about mapping. We are solving the issue of inadequate or limited tools, and. Um, we're also solving the problem of um, the need for innovation and support. And also um, by providing a secure platform for data storage and the management, we are solving the problem of filling the gap of lack of secure place to store and manage data. So from this, CRAS is doing this. We are working with the com communities using one of the most common gadgets these days, which is the mobile device, to collect data about land or any uh, geospatially linked data. So far, and using our suite of tools, and by way of information, whatever I'm, I'm showing this dashboard, this dashboard is part of our tools. Um, so from here, it's showing what we have been able to do over the years. You see, we're working mainly in the global south, um, the, the countries which are in green are the countries which we're working in. And so far we have um, uh, around 4.9 million people on the platform. And we have been able to issue um, land documents to more than 100,000 people. Let me look at the chat. Okay. So welcome to the Cadastro platform. The Cadastro platform, as the name suggests, is a platform that um, combine, um, entails a number of devices, um, your computer, your mobile phone, or tablet, uh, across all range, Android, um, Apple, uh, Microsoft, or Amazon. With uh, the Cadastro Foundation, uh, the, the Cadastro platform uses mobile GPS-enabled mobile devices as the center of data collection as the main tool for data collection and use the more, uh, your computer as main platform for data storage, for data analysis and data presentation. And using the mobile device, we support data collection both online and offline. So we offer what is called customizable data collection. For those who are going to come to our session and I wish most of you come to our session, you're going to see how we can be able to create a questionnaire and uh, send it out to different people in different parts of the globe so long as they can access the, the platform. Um, and they'll be able to uh, collect data and they'll be able to own the data. So long as you come with the organization, you are the one who owns that data and you're able to control it. Um, you and we assure you that the data is uh, storage is secure through our platform you're able to collect multiple uh, flexible multimedia data you can collect videos you can collect photos you can collect voice for instance you go to a community and you want to collect evidence and they're giving you evidence in terms of uh, audio you can 
in case you're collecting data and you want them to sign, they can do a signature. We offer visualize, uh, visualization analysis and an analysis tool, advocacy tools is going to see. Um, you're also able to integrate with other data systems. For instance, you, stored, you collected your data using a GPS, you'll be able to upload it into the system. For instance, um, 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 uh, for instance, um, you use drone imagery, you can be able to upload it into the system and overlay it with other data. We offer data migration, measurement, and we have a variety of imagery and based map flexibilities that you can choose from. So as I mentioned earlier on, um, basically we have mobile tools that support online and offline data, mobile data collection, uh, field workforce management, um, in case you want to increase your accuracy from the five, seven or two that we, we see when you're using a mobile phone GPS, you, and you, you can um, increase it using DNSS support. You, um, you, you, you're able to download high resolution imagery. You have to, you can use multiple base map and it also support um, um, multiple, um, multiple language support. So you can have this in English, in Swahili, in Africana, name it. Sorry, just a quick reminder, it's four minutes left to your time, so that will keep to the schedule. Okay. Oh, thanks, that's good. Um, so, Kadassi in action, um, I want just to give you a few examples on wh what we've been able to do across the, the world. Um, this um, is the Kadassi platform. You see, uh, this is a number of services that we create, and then you can be able to download. Um, you can be able to input uh, the different information, what I've been talking about. Um, even photo, you see the different uh, kind of languages and you can be able also to, 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 to collect either polygons or points. Um, you can be able, also from the platform, we can be able to create for you a certificate of title or ownership. So um, we have worked, uh, for instance, in Uganda, um, we are working in 10 um, Uganda districts uh, from October to present. And um, so far, we have supported around um, more than a thousand people um, to gain, um, to get uh, CCOs or what we call certificate of, um, certificate of occupancy. And this is the form that we have been using. So we are able to convert this form into this form. And with this, you're able to collect everything that you need. And this is the map of Bulisa. And apart from that, you can do different analysis after you collect the data. And we are coming to recognize that um, land data is not just land data for ownership. Land data has to support other things, like, such as planning, such as budgeting. So we are offering these tools that are able to support that and even support the government and even individuals or ac academic institutions. One um, unique use of our tools is that, um, and as you understand as a surveyor these days, um, as opposed to previously, we are kind of involved in every sector of our lives. So for instance, we are offering tools to support um, evidence building through uh, specially linked data. And with this, um, we, we are able to support our partners in Nairobi, known as Pamoja Trust, where we are able to do um, an analysis, uh, a, a risk assessment analysis of how many people are going to be evicted. Um, let me just cancel that. Um, as it loads, let me show you other things that we have done. Um, we have also been supporting um, the documentation of uh, indigenous communities in Kenya, the Ogier people, for instance, and we were able to help them um, demarcate the boundary. And also using the story map, we were able to take them um, to help them uh, be able to build a especially link report that we were able to share with the administration. Um, Cadastro Foundation has a whole uh, training and support center. In case you're wondering, oh, this, this is a very exciting tool. How will I know how to use it? It looks so complicated. No, it's not complicated. And if you feel so, we have a whole website which is free for everyone. And as a member of this um, workshop, we have created accounts for each and every person which are going to uh, be lasting for a year. So you have a whole year to learn about this. Go to help.cadastro.org and from there you'll be able to to learn more um, about our tools and even how to use it. Before we go to questions, um, if you may allow me. Um, 
No, you're free. Uh, just... We can go to question then. Um, I wanted to show you the storm map, but it's kind of somewhere. Have you done with a question? Well, yeah, we have one question from Benedict. He was yes, asking Benedict. if the, if the ArcGIS you kept on the dashboard is it an ArcGIS software? That the ArcGIS online that was presented to us. Yeah, so the Cadastra platform um, is is based on the ArcGIS uh, platform, and, um, uh, and um, we embody the the tenants or. Of the social tenant domain model, uh, that is the model with the specialization of uh, the land administration uh, domain model, and uh, the software as it is is able to capture the different social tenant relationships and the different parties and and, and other special data that is required. Hope I answered Benjamin. Yes, I hope I was not answered Benedict. Anyways, now moving on forward. Thank you very much, Justice. It was highly, highly educative. I think we're having more questions for you, Justice. Yes, please. Adam Dalton from Uganda said, how do I get the login details for ArcGIS organization accounts from Kadasta? Um, we, we were able to share with you all the, um, we were able to share the people who signed in the MOOC course and they sent us um, their details. We, yesterday we sent out an email with, um, the credentials. Uh, so in case you didn't do that, uh, please uh, just come to the training and then we, we are going to create you, uh, we are going to create one today for you. So I'm looking forward to, 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 to discuss more on these um, on the breakout session and I hope we're going to enjoy. <laughs>